Well, hello, and welcome back to another podcast episode with Brittany Bundles. You are listening to the Brittany Bundles podcast, where we empower people through entrepreneurship. And today what I'd like to talk about is I'd like to talk about conflicted business choices. So very frequently, just living life in general, you may feel very conflicted as to what you should do, where you should be at in life what you should be doing in your business, whose advice you should listen to and whose you shouldn't, which idea deserves to come into uh, fruition for your reality and what idea doesn't. And so it's this constant balance that we all are, um, not all, but some may be struggling with. And today I wanna help with that. I wanna talk about conflicted business choices. So helping us all narrow down which path we need to be on, which choices are best for our business and our lives, and how we can start to make it a habit to ensure that we are choosing uh, the most productive options that we are presented with. If you are interested in this episode, please stay tuned, go ahead and share the episode. Like I mentioned in so many different episodes, you can share by posting on your social media, post the link, you can also share by sending the link in a text message to a family member or a friend. You can um, share the podcast message by turning on the podcast when you're riding in the car with a family member or a friend. Get creative with how you share, but just make sure that you do. We want to make sure that we're spreading the word, getting as many entrepreneurs out there involved as we possibly can. We also want to make sure that we're doing our part in helping the other entrepreneurs that have either sponsored an episode or have been on the podcast to share their information. We want to make sure that we're getting their message out as well. So if you can go ahead and share the podcast, I'm sure we'd all greatly appreciate it. I'll give you a moment to do that and I'll be back in just a moment. All right. All right. So I am back. And again, today we're talking about conflicted business choices. Now, the first point that I have is asking yourself and deciding which path are you choosing? So in business, right, we have a lot of different paths, but really it narrows down to if you're going to work in integrity or if you're not, if you're going to be an honest entrepreneur or not, if you're going to do things uh, quote unquote by the book or if you're not, right? And so I think a lot of people get conflicted because they're mixing up lifestyles. So one minute they're doing something that's ethically correct. Another moment they may be presented with an idea or an opportunity, or so it looks like an opportunity that may not be um, too legit. Maybe they, for example, have decided to sell hair extensions and they initially started off with great quality, um, great communication, great customer service and getting in business to uh, please and, and um, you know, overly satisfy their potential customers and their current customers and clients, right? And then they see, okay, well, hmm, I have people purchasing with me, but I can make more money if I sell a lower quality. I can charge the same amount and just buy from another vendor with lower quality. And so at that point, you are not working in integrity anymore. And so when another opportunity or another issue or anything arises, let's say good or bad, it definitely will have an impact on what you're doing to your business because you reap what you sow and, you know, whatever you plant, you know, if you're, if you're watering it, even if it's not right, it can grow. And so I've had people that have done that before and have come to me because their sales have stopped or slowed, um, they're getting bashed now on social media uh, based on the quality or the, the lack thereof um, of their products. And they're wanting to know how can they redeem themselves. And what I like to, to ask is you have to decide how you're going to run your business from the beginning and stick to that. Are you going to be someone that is known for conducting reputable business and holding yourself and your employees or yourself and your affiliates or whoever you're working with your team to a certain standard and reputation of doing what's right, no matter what the cost or what the loss, okay? So 
decide which path you're choosing. So often we can feel conflicted in our lives and also in our business because we haven't decided which path we're going to take. We're kind of just eager to jump at anything that looks like an opportunity and not realizing that whatever you do will impact your future. And a lot of us have tunnel vision and we're just looking at the right now. Well, if I do this right now, I can come up quickly right now. I'm here to remind you that again, what you do, it will come back for you or on you. Treating people right is going to last longer than a lot of business practices out here that are being told and sold. I do believe that business, when you're running a business, it's more than just you know one avenue that you should focus on. But if you're going to focus on one avenue, focus on treating people right, because that's going to have beneficial um, uh, results for your reputation, for your trust, uh, and also for the, um, the, the fruit of the seeds that you plant. So what you get back. The second thing that I want to talk about is, are your emotions and logic in line? So sometimes we may not feel like doing what's best for our business and we may not even feel like running our business so we may take a just a, a break and decide not to run our business for six months and then come back to it and we're like hey you know now i'm feeling like i don't know if i want to be in this business or not because initially when i started my business i was at least getting a few sales each month now that i'm back i'm not getting any matter of fact i'm not even getting any website traffic and not realizing that we did not make a commitment and stick to it as to what we're going to do for our business. So if you start a business and your commitment is to that business, stick to it. If you have to pivot it or if you want to change what you're doing, do that. That's always better, in my opinion, than just getting out of it and jumping right back in. Because the more you do that, it's not just you looking at your business. Remember, it's other people, too. It tears down the confidence that people have in your brand. Now, not everybody, but a lot of people won't take you as serious if they are always looking or if they go to look at your page and you're always inactive. You know, you're you're there one week and then the next week you're taking a break. You're there for two months and then the next month you're taking a break. So even if I'm looking at this as a restaurant, if there's a restaurant that is sometimes open and sometimes not, I'm not going to plan any special events going to that specific restaurant because there's a chance that they could be open and there's a chance they could not be. If there's a restaurant that goes on break and they set the right expectation or they go on break around the same time each year, that's a little bit different. But one that is just taking a break all the time because the owner is overwhelmed with the business or they don't want to work the business anymore, eventually they're going to lose a lot of, of customers because they're not being consistent. So sometimes we may feel like not doing something or we may feel like doing something that isn't beneficial for our business. And we have to make sure that our logic and emotions are in line. So that looks like uh, acknowledging our emotions. So acknowledging that we may feel tired or acknowledging that we may feel burnt out. By the way, if you are looking at tips on how to overcome business burnout, I do have a video on that in my business playlist on YouTube at Brittany Bundles. So be sure to check that out in your spare time if that's something that you need assistance with. But sometimes we feel like not carrying on or sometimes we feel like cutting corners and doing things that may not be in the best interest of our customers and not thinking of the negative effect that it's going to have later down the line. So it's really important to Decide what path you're going to be on. Are you going to work in integrity no matter what? Are you going to be honest and upfront no matter what? Are you going to be an advocate for your customers and clients no matter what? And then also, are you going to operate just on how you feel? Or are you going to operate based on what you need to do? Okay, those are going to help kind of streamline a lot of your decisions and take some of the conflict out. The third point that I want to go over is filtering information. So once you decide what path you're going to be on for your business, and once you can check and regulate your emotions and your logic, it's going to be really easy to filter out information. Because as an entrepreneur, you may notice that you'll get a lot of people's input and advice on what you should do with your business. I mean, and that's going to come from people that have never purchased from you. That's going to come from people that have never run a business. The advice is going to come from people that, um, 
you know, may not even truly like you. The advice is going to come from people that do like and love you, but really don't know what advice to give you, but they still want to give you some type of words of, of, of wisdom or what they think may be encouragement. Um, so you have to realize that you're going to constantly, if you haven't realized already, you're going to, you're going to get, you're going to get, um, opinions and figuring out how to filter those opinions and recommendations are going to be key and taking recommended advice that's going to be beneficial to your business. I get advice all the time and I have to align it with the path that I'm on for my business. I have to align it with logic and I'm not saying I'm ignoring my emotion, but I have to make sure that it makes sense. It's not just what I feel like doing, but it's something that I, I should do based on this, this, and this. And then also, you know, praying about it, making sure that I'm asking God if I'm still confused or even before I go through my checklist. I'm getting in the habit, trying to get in the habit of asking God first, what should I do? And then trusting him to... Uh, guide me and lead me. So filter out information. Those are going to, those, those tips are going to help you be able to do that more effectively. And then aligning information. So the information that you get, you may have gotten some great advice, but really not know how to align it with your business. Someone may say, Hey, you know, I think that your business would be great if you rebrand it. And so that may be great information, but you may be um, conflicted as to, well, how, which area should I rebrand? Should I rebrand my entire business? Should I brand rebrand a portion of it? Um, does that mean I should change my logo? Does that mean that I should change my slogan? Does that mean I should change my hours of operation? So that goes back to number one, like I mentioned a minute ago, but ask God for clarification. And then also make sure that what you're doing aligns with the path that you're on for your business, the vision that you have, because the truth is you can get a lot of good advice, but it doesn't mean that it's the best advice for your business. Um, you can get a lot of opinions, but it doesn't mean that you need to go with every opinion that you get. Because if you do that, you may notice that you're constantly jumping through all of these hoops and you're not seeing the progress within your business that you want it to see because you're not aligning that information to benefit your end goal. Okay. The last tip that I have in regards to conflicted business choices, when you just don't know what to choose, is trusting the process. Sometimes we have chosen the right path for our business. We've made the right decision or decisions for our business, and we are still not happy. We're still not fulfilled because we don't see immediate results. And when I say immediate, I'm not talking about just overnight, but sometimes we expect results to come in a matter of months. Sometimes we expect those results to come next year. And to be honest, everyone's results are at a different time frame. Everyone's business is different. And so if you're comparing yourself to someone else or if you're holding yourself up to the standard, and it's okay to have goals and expectations for your business, but if your goals and expectations for your business aren't realistic for what you're doing, and I really hate even saying not realistic, but let's just say if they haven't come um, if they haven't become a reality at that point, um, making sure that you're trusting the process, making sure that you're not losing faith, making sure that you're not giving up, that you're not throwing in the towel, that you're not saying to heck with it because you didn't see the results that you anticipated seeing is really going to help you be able to come into a uh, different experience with your experiences with your business, where you're put in a position to make a choice. You make that choice and being able to have the patience to allow the benefits of that choice to happen. It's kind of like when you are deciding to eat healthier. If you decide to eat healthier or drink more water today, you may not notice immediate benefits. Now, some people do, some people don't. You may not notice your skin clearing up in a matter of a week. You may not notice that um, your mouth doesn't feel as dry in a matter of two weeks. You may not notice that um, your body is able to move a lot more uh, seamlessly without cracking, <laughs> you know, having those little crack noises when you move. You may not. And then there's some people that can start drinking water and notice the immediate changes overnight. So it, it takes some time for some and the time frame is different for all. But one thing that business has taught me and life also has taught me is patience. As long as you're doing the right action steps, as long as you're on the right path and you're committed to doing things the right way, 
allow patience to teach you uh, and show you the power of trusting the process and your faith and remembering that you're not in this alone. Uh, God gave you this vision. I posted something on Facebook the other day where it says the same God that gave you the vision is the same God that will give you the clients. Uh, a lot of times we stress out about how we're going to do this and how we're going to do that. And by no means am I saying that we shouldn't work. But I'm saying that if you're doing things the right way, you know you are. If you're striving to be the best you can be, if you're putting your best out there, if you're staying consistent, those are the right action steps. What else can you do? You know, if you're asking God for uh, uh, to lead you, for insight, for guidance, if you're sticking true, even if you may see someone else doing something that's not ethical, as long as you're doing what's right, I would feel confident and peaceful resting in that. Uh, I remember when the PPP loans were really popular and people would come to me and say, you're not doing a PPP loan? And I'm like, no, because I don't feel right doing something that's not ethical. I know I don't have any um, employees that I'm paying a paycheck to. I know that, you know, whatever the, qual the qual I can't remember all the criteria, but the qual qualifications and the criteria didn't apply wholeheartedly to my business. And so although I could see other people getting money and other people doing different things, I didn't want to do it because I know that it wouldn't feel right to me. And I know that there would be a, an end result that would um, affect my life and affect my business because what you put out, again, you get back. And so I believe that once we learn how to decide how we're going to be in life, how we're going to treat people, how we're going to run our business, how we're going to run our life, it becomes a lot easier to make those decisions versus when we're out just deciding to go this way and that way uh, based on what sounds good that day. You know, and although that can sound funny, a lot of people are living like that. I know I've lived like that before, too, just deciding to do whatever I want to do based on how today sounds, you know, um, and not based on a solid plan and, you know, my view and my vision for the future. And, uh, you know, not even thinking of consulting or asking God for his advice, you know. So those are some tips that I have that can help with conflicts in business. Uh, like I say in every episode, I don't want it to end. If you would like to be a guest on the Brittany Bundles podcast, please email me at btalks at yahoo.com. Please also follow me on social media. I am on Instagram at Brittany underscore bundles. That is Brittany, B-R-I-T-T-N-E-Y underscore bundles, B-U-N-D-L-E-S. I'm on Facebook, Brittany Bundles, YouTube, Brittany Bundles, and Twitter, Brittany Bundles. Until next time. I'll talk to you all in the next podcast episode.